Jake, where are we going? To the Bard Rock Cafe, Miss Polly. I know you're what they call a foodie, so surely you'll appreciate their cuisine. Find us on this side of the Sword Coast. I heard people talking, and I'm pretty sure that place is a smoldering crater. As you two approach what you expect to be a smoldering crater, you see a freshly reconstructed two-story tavern with a giant banner out front that says, Grand Reopening. You also feel an uncomfortably familiar sensation as you approach, the same one you each feel before wild magic surges within you from your curse. Okay, maybe not a smoldering crater, but something doesn't feel right here. Of course something's off. Me old friend Brock Song isn't here at the moment. Someone else will have to read the ads for their sponsors. Spirit, if you will. Shameless self-promotion activated. Bard Rock Network and all of its content is brought to you by Dragon Master Games, a local game store where you can find collectibles and TTRPG essentials. If they aren't local to your area, check out their online storefront in the show notes and add a note to your order. Bard Rock sent you. Who are you saying that to? Jake, whose speaking stone number did you just dial? Um, Arlo isn't here right now. Can I take a message? How did you get this number? Uh, anyway, Dragon Master Games sounds like a great store and you should definitely support them. Thanks for the tip. But seriously, stop calling this number. I quickly hang up my speaking stone and say, No one important, Miss Polly. Let's head inside and check out their wares. Miss Polly, I found some treasure. This just looks like a bunch of t-shirts, mugs, tote bags, pins, and stickers to me. Ah, it's all the finest swag. <sighs> Jake, we, we've been over this. All treasure is swag. But not all swag is treasure. You don't have to steal this Bard Rock Network merch. You can just pick it up at affordable prices from their merch store. Just go to tpublic.com slash user slash Bard Rock Cafe and you can get all this, all that and more. You have a point, Miss Polly. We won't be making off of this swag. Besides, buying it helps support the network and keep them making quality content. Exactly. Tell you what. You can have a t-shirt on me. All right then, Miss Polly. What shirt size are you? That, that's, that's not what I mean. I, t never mind. Let's just start the show. Previously on Bard Rock Cafe, Baragon Doubletail and a group of heroes from across time and space were tasked by the goddess Istis to foil Moloch's evil plot to rewrite fate. After a long stroll through the treacherous tunnels of Pandemonium, our heroes finally reach the cavern where Moloch is hiding. Can the party stop Moloch from ruining the timeline? Find out today on Bard Rock Cafe. Is everybody ready to jump back on yep. in? Uh, yes, and for the audience, we realized during the break that I totally just edited out uh, that we had a wild magic trigger for Christina's character and for National 20 off of Marty's character. Yes, we do. So, um, I I'm going to address Christina's first, and then I'm going to address uh, or, um, uh, Baragon's next. Um, so, so for uh, Vaya, you realize that suddenly, in, in this weird moment, you feel that surge come upon you, and you realize that for the next hour, your spells seem to be shrouded in illusions. They appear to be the result of physical acts, such as poison or traps, instead of actually casting a spell. So it looks like you're like throwing grenades or something whenever you cast a spell. Oh, sick. Okay. That's awesome. some Looney Tune shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so I think how that um, appears for her mage armor is that like she she goes to like cast it and it's normally like one of her feathers sort of like does a quick little clock turn and it sort of like shrouds her in like a deeper shade of some of the darker feathers from her wings and so instead it's also like this armor that appears on her physically which isn't normal and she's like oh neat that's cool never done that before now, as you all um, continue to walk down, being guided by this chain devil, the space seems to open, and as it does so, you can see with your dark vision and with, uh, you, you know, um, Pemdas's light coming out from his eyes, that the 
the tunnels seem to change and twist and distort in very strange ways, almost as though like they're bubbling outward. You can also see these odd sort of patterns, like shapes of light, just free floating um, and moving throughout the space. And the, the bearded devil's like, oh, there's one right there. You do, do not want to be touching that. And he, he, he very obviously like makes a, a wide berth around it. But as you all kind of pass and look, you can see like it, it's almost like a crack of light it's out in the middle of the space. And where the cracks kind of uh, converge, you can see a little bit of light and a little, it's almost like a window. Does anybody go up and look at it? Pemdas was in the process of reaching his finger toward it until he said, you don't want to touch that, and I backed my hand away. Absolutely. Right, was you not going to on. touch that, clearly. Who would do that? No, you definitely don't, and I'll show you why here in a moment. He and proceeds the, to touch it. Can, <laughs> he proceeds to touch it? <laughs> No, no, I thought that'd be like, oh, let me show you why you shouldn't. And then he would just hand out. That's what I was envisioning. <laughs> <laughs> you continue on down the path and you, you it like winds and twists. And it's definitely much, much different than any of the, um, the landscaping that you've been going through here before. But as you kind of come around a bend, you spot a little imp just standing on the floor uh, at the bottom um looking up into one of those fractals of light and he just seems to be staring there eyes big and wide mouth slacked a little bit um you've all seen imps they, they kind of look like a, a bat and a monkey but they're red got a big old tail um but it's just standing there hunched down our uh, wings folded backward arms kind of just dragging and just staring up at this fractal of light and the 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 chain devil says, yeah, there's one right there. He walked over and looked into it and got locked in place. But every so often, you see another one and another one as you walk, make your way down this path. And you pass more devils that are, um, that are locked, transfixed in this light. You see a bearded devil. You see more spine devils and another chain devil as well, all transfixed and staring at these uh, these strange um, reflections um, just out there in the corridor. Go ahead, anybody who is proficient in um, arcana, make arcana checks for me. Uh, that is a 10 on the die for an 18 for PEMDOS. That is a 29 for Vaya. Vaya, with your 29, you start doing the math in your head. You know plenty about magic. And you you're realize, begin to realize that whatever it is Malik's doing, it's actually warping and twisting time itself and he seems to, it's almost as though he's bending it and as he's doing so you're seeing the effect ripple outward away from wherever he is these fractals here in in open space are not good things these are the the precursor to actually time shattering you what you're seeing is the first effects of that huh okay um, I think her eyes sort of narrow as she's taking all of that in. She doesn't really do anything with that information yet, just trying to keep their cover um, and not wanting to like have any kind of magic cast, like do anything weird at the moment um, as far as like the devil picking up on it from hearing since all of the stuff that she could do right now is <laughs> sound based and she is not a sorcerer. Um, so <laughs> she's just kind of keeping that information to herself. Okay. Uh, would you just look at all these frozen fractals all around? <sighs> Boo! Boo! <laughs> Boos echo from the fractals. We all just ruin each other's stealth by booing them. <laughs> it's like that one meme, like, oh, how do you know which one's pretending to be dead? Who has dark mission? I do! <laughs> Well, what's funny is, um, as, as you say that, um, just up ahead, you, you hear a, 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 a voice just 
barely, because as you've walked into this chamber, you, you can't help but notice that the winds are starting to get lower now. They're no longer pushing as strongly against you as they were. But as you, your group kind of makes your way around the bend, you hear this... <laughs> Baragon, you're the first person to see that there is an imp that has been crouching down behind the wall, obviously keeping a watch um, for anybody to come down that tunnel. But the moment your eyes lock, that magic surge just triggers. And... A bolt of light just kind of shoots out from you, hitting the wall next to him, dissolving the wall completely. It disintegrates. Oh. Just like that. Oh. Oh. Well then. But yeah, um, the wall dissolves away from this imp, and the imp jumps back. Ah! What the heck is this? Who are all you? Why are you in here? And uh, the bearded devil's like... We have a prisoner for Moloch. This one here, and he pushes Baragon forward a little bit, and uh, he's, "Where's Mo where's the boss? Boss Moloch, where are you?" And from the back of the chamber, you, you probably can't see him at this point yet, but Baragon, you at least would be able to recognize the voice of Moloch, the Archdemon. Stalson, what is this? I ordered no one be admitted until the ritual is complete. And as you all start stepping into this chamber, you should at least be able to see some of this. Or not yet, actually. You're still kind of far away. But you can make your way a little bit farther. You walk past the imp um, towards where the chain devil, or not the chain devil, yeah, it is the chain devil. The chain devil is leading you towards an open chamber that is a good 70 feet or more wide, um, a, a, at least that high, of this very worn, smooth stone that you've been seeing bef here before, but this one, this area, the light seems to glisten off of it, showing shadows and shades. If you, if you were near the, the, the walls themselves, you could look down into them and see, almost like a mirror in, or a portal into time itself, fragments of your past moments of your pre your previous life just show for a brief moment and it's hard to look away but past that in the center of this room itself there is a large contraption this thing is at least 10 feet tall made of some material that almost looks like brass there's gears and dials big gigantic um what's the gyroscope um type things twisting and and spinning around to one side you can see a large orb of a crystal glowing red past that an arcane um sort of glyph spinning wildly around and to the far end you can see something floating just a little bit above the um, end of the thing over a um, small contraption that seems to glow and have very faint runes all about it. There seems to be energy pulsating from this object, pushing through at the very end something that you can't quite make out, that it just appears to be small and hovering above it. But beyond that, you can see brilliant blue energy pushing forward against the wall. There seems to be some type of pulsing that just goes every so often. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Focusing that energy that's coming off the end of this towards one of those fragmented shards, one of those fractals of time. And it seems to be pushing it open slowly. And standing next to this object is a tall 10-foot bulk of a demon. 
It has huge horns um, coming out of his skull, coming around almost like a bull. His entire body is pure red, and he has dark black eyes and a wide mouth filled with teeth that seems to be smiling as it looks towards Baragon. Now, also around this um, device, you can see that there are three uh, more spined devils that seem to be operating um, complex uh, orbs of light. Their hands are kind of outstretched and on them, and they're moving about like, you know, those, um, those glass balls that have the electricity, and you touch it, and it goes right to your, your fingertips. They, they kinda, it's kind of like that, but it's a, of magic, and they seem to be trying to manipulate it as they're, as they're working. But you can see at the distance, there is Malik stepping forward towards, well, towards the Chain Devil and towards Baragon. As he says, What is this? Why have you come before me? This is a interesting gift to be sure. But yet I ordered none be admitted! And all of the devils kind of flinch back a little bit at this. Uh, we were sent by the Lord Sirik of Pandemonium. He captured this man, and I pushed Barry on Double Tail. And he sent us here to make an offering to you, because Sirik would like to uh, be in a beneficial position in your new world order. <laughs> Go ahead and make a persuasion check. As you hear Malik, even with the, the wind, the, it, like I said, it is lower. Um, you can hear a little bit better now at this point. But even over that wind, his voice seems to echo and resound throughout this chamber. All right, so that is a natural 20 Ooh. for a 25. That sounds like a wild magic surge to me. It, it does. Uh so, are we going with natural 20 as a critical success for skill check, or should I add, I have a feature that can make that score higher if I need to worry about it. Yeah, go ahead and tell me your total. It's 25. First, let's res let's see if, uh, what was it, if you get a nat 20, you roll uh, a roll d20. Two d100s and, and, no, I roll two okay, d100s, yeah, and then I get the better result, whatever you think is better. That's right. So, I have 77 okay. for the first roll, and for the second roll, and I have a 38. You're a, a sorcerer. sorcerer. I use the special sorcerer table, not the generic one. Okay, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Is that sorcerer 2? Right, the one that's a a part of the supplement, not the one that's part of the handbook. Okay, got it, yeah. Okay, and you said you got a... 77 and 38. As you, as you, um, as you tell this to Malik, and um, he, he seems to be considering your words, because I am going to roll to see whether he believes you. Um, you, for some odd reason, for the next minute, you know Heightened Spell and Quicken Spell, and each only costs one sorcery point. Sweet. All right, well, because while I was considering before I know whether or not to succeed, I have a racial trait called Built for Success, where I can add a d4 to an ability check. I'm go gonna, for it. I'm going to go ahead and roll that d4. Boop. I add three, so that's 28 total. Okay, so it looks like he rolled a 28 okay. on his insight. We have a tie. Wait, so um, at that moment, seeing Moloch's face, you sort of see one of the feathers as um, Vaya's holding her wings and her hands outwards, and she does like a weird, cool little clockwork motion, and she's going to use her chronal shift, so I need Moloch to re-roll that, please. I can re- I, I can like use that it. after I see whether the roll succeeds or fails. Love it. Absolutely. Let's see if he's still able to succeed. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> oh, my God. I pulled out the wrong time. I'm uh. sorry. <laughs> You, 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 you tried your best. You're seeing this happen. You see that moment that Malik doesn't seem like he's believing you. You twist reality, trying to change fate. And yet, in this space, this area of, that's literally pure time magic, it doesn't f succeed. Somehow, oh. the... Whatever Malik is doing is warping time around you, and you're unable to change what happened. And he just, he, his eyes narrow. He looks at 
Baragon, he looks right. at your group. So I would like to. I have. I more have more timey wine bullshit. <laughs> I can, as a reaction, cast Silvery Barb to make him roll yet again. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay. Now he gets a 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one more time trying to roll this. Let's see what happens. 30 <laughs> damn it! God damn it! <laughs> uh, my, Look, you know, sometimes the dice tell a story, and right now the story is right, all of us not fucking believe us. <laughs> but I cast, yeah. I cast a spell. Do I proc more wild magic? Well, we're going to see what happens here because he doesn't believe you and he is prepared. So, everyone, let's roll some initiative. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't forget to click your, your character token before you roll initiative. Oh, if we're if you want to put add it to the counter or if you're rolling in person, I guess you can just tell Matt what it is. Yeah, just tell me when, when I'm ready for you and I'll... That is an 18 for PEMDAS. <clears throat> 23 for Vaya. Not 20 for Riss. Amazing. All right, more wild magic. We need it. <laughs> um, How did you get a 24.18? Uh, there's a tiebreaker, on. That's a three. So oh. six. Barry okay, always rolls so lower. Than so, hey, he rolled Got higher six. than the end. <laughs> your clone moves on your turn, I assume. Yes. Evian? <laughs> Not one to put me at five. Five. So that's another wild magic surge. Oh my God. I'm on the bar table. That so, could be helpful or it could be hurtful. So let's do that real quick. I need to get this guy in. What do I roll for uh, to get numbers right. for the? You roll two d100s. Uh, right. So if you're using the, if you, if you I'm just gonna use you know, roll twenty. Yeah. I'm gonna use roll yeah. twenty because yeah, yeah, I don't want to dig out d10s. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. 77 and 16. And then you have, you are multi-class. Yes, you have both the rogue and cleric table available for Matt to choose from. Oh, jeepers. Oh, God, this is going to be You have four options, Matt. Yep. <laughs> Which is great when you roll you, you rolled the rational 20. You get the best of four yeah. possible results. Oh, God. It just sucks on those nat ones when you get the worst of four possible results. <laughs> oh, dear. You're a rogue and what else? Cleric. Cleric. Cleric? Okay. You know what? I, I like this one. Okay. So, um, Reese, uh, it actually looks like you might be the top of the order. Yeah, you are. So, um, at the start of your turn, mm -hmm. no matter what, um, what the first thing that's going to happen at the start of your turn is your holy symbol becomes almost unbearably cold, and you cast Death Ward oh. at the start of your next that's turn. Excellent thing to have. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, does it, it really is. Does it use up my spell slots? Uh, no. Okay. N no? <laughs> no, the way Bard Rock Cafe does this is any spell you get from Wild Magic is basically a free action. Mm. It doesn't use your action bonus action unless the proc says it does. Okay. And, it does, and it's free magic because the Wild Magic's doing it, not you. Cool. Okay, well, since um, Vaya is right beside me, I'm going to go ahead and, and... Since I'm probably, like, I have my hand on her shoulder or something, it's just going to kind of imbue her yes. with death ward the squishy one yes thank you yeah <laughs> do, do you need me to tell you what death ward does no i have it on my spell sheet well we should probably okay, let the cool. audience know that yeah, I'll pop yeah it you're in absolutely chat. right oh, it so um oh, you touch a creature and grant it a measure of protection from death the first time the target would drop to zero hit points as a result of taking damage the target instead drops to one hit point and the spell ends if the spell is still in effect when the target is so is subjected to an effect that would kill it instantly without dealing damage. That effect is instead negated against the target and the spell ends. So pretty pr pretty powerful protection there. Yeah. Probably my favorite cleric spell ever. <laughs> yeah, and you want to know what? Spell. It's one of the ones that I get from being a grave cleric. So that one's just automatically prepared and doesn't count towards my prepared spells. Nice. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That word is my second favorite cleric spell after warding bond. Mm. Would you want Evian's things when it comes to her turn? Um, well, go ahead and roll. And uh, I did. 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 I got an oh, 80 did. and a 90. 80 and a 90. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. Well, well, I'm going to do this one on your turn, just because it's right. that way. And then, okay. while we're still resolving wild magic, because I cast a spell before we rolled initiative, did I proc wild magic off my silvery barbs? 
Um, let's see here. Oh. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, you That is a natural 20 on the roller, everybody. <laughs> one D100, I'm stuck at whatever it does. That oh, is God. an 80 t 82. There we go. I thought it was a 7 for a second. Okay, I gotta go down to the Sorcerer tab. Uh, do 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 Looking for the Sorcerer. And what numbers did you say again? Just 82. You only roll one off of spell count. 82. 82. Okay. So for the next minute, the first time you roll the highest, the first time you roll the highest number possible on a damage die each turn, roll that die again and add it to the battle, to the nice. damage. Your dice explode. My dice oh explode. My God. Oh my God. Your dice explode. <laughs> I'm going to pop that into chat just because I, I read it stupidly. But for the next minute, the first time you roll the highest number possible on a damage die each turn, the roll that you roll that die again and add it. So if you roll a six on a D6, you keep the D6 and then you roll the dice again. Oh my God, I got to get AOD extra. crit rule. That's a very, hits. very good one. Except it sounds like yeah. potentially that could be infinite because if you kept rolling sixes. Oh, no, just the first time. Never mind. I'm dumb. Just the first. Yeah. Just the first time. Yeah. Well, just the for first each time. turn. Yeah. So. Yeah. Each turn, the first time I roll a damage die. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Got it. The first time I roll the highest number possible. Yeah. Yeah. Scorching yes. ray for the win. I guess it's mean to fire. Never mind. I have I have some some general queries before we like fully start about the arena that we're in. Sure. Absolutely. What's the height you said of this cavern, and how big of a creature is Moloch? Oh, I, I love okay. when you ask these questions because I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to her podcast enough. Everyone, listen to Agents of Damn. Get an idea of what Christina's up to. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Ma Malik is considered a large fiend. Okay. No, that's thing number one. Um, the diameter of the space i'll just give you all that real quick you got 85 feet wide the um chamber is about 150 feet um the other direction as for tall 50 feet okay. 50 feet tall 85 foot wide over 100 feet length and I know you said he's a large creature, but like height-wise, in that large size category, what's right. his height? He said ten feet I'm, taller. Than ten feet tall. Yeah, about okay. ten feet tall. Yes, ten feet tall. He's very big. He's massive. He's got huge arms, cloven uh, uh, goat hooves on the feet. You, you know, he's your typical gigantic, freaky-looking demon. Amazing. Awesome. Okay. Um. He's. Also, I didn't mention it, but what he's carrying in his hand is a large cat o' nine tails whip. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Moloch's famous whip. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. yep. There it is. Uh, we po Marty popped that in chat so you can take a look at that dude. He's big and he's beefy and he's yep. scary. For the audience at home, it is the standard stock out of Moloch. Give him a Google. Ooh. <laughs> Absolutely. Big O eyes, big mouth filled with teeth, large muscles, wearing nothing but a loincloth because what else would a demon wear? Uh, I guess it looks more like a yeah. banana hammock. <laughs> it looks sure, it looks too hammock. fitted to be a loincloth. It would be hanging down if it was a loincloth. To be fair. I, mean, I was trying to be generous, <laughs> but if you want to imagine Malik in a banana hammock, more <laughs> I more don't, but it's what's in front of me. So just, so I need yeah, to point out, there. canonically, in his first appearance in this, our continuity in Asians of Damned, Moloch established he had an enormous schlong. <laughs> that, I'm so oh, sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm, I can't help what my co- co-hosts do when I'm not around. <laughs> I blame that on them. <laughs> so, it's a banana hammock, but it is a plucking plantain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is just dangling down there, oh. being barely held on, but held it in check by a thong of leather, uh, brown leather and I'm so um, sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it seems like worse. it's being held in place by chains. So, yeah. Um, that, that's what you got. God, big old bare chest, lots of rippling muscles, big hands, uh, a whip. He's um, every dominatrix's oh, uh, uh, ideal. Pollock's in his I hot devil era. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this is yeah. the I don't part think of he's hairy enough <laughs> to be a bear. No, definitely not a bear. <laughs> definitely not a bear. Um, but let's go ahead and start things off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you know what? I want some music. <laughs> uh, I'm having fun with this. So let, let's have a little music. Ah, uh, yes. Now I feel epic. So let's go ahead uh -huh. and start things off with Reese. Yeah. You are the first person in initiative. You are on the ceiling. You're looking down at, well, dear God, there's Moloch. There's a big device. There's stuff going on, and there's still those fractals of light all throughout this chamber. So what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to sneak towards on the ceiling closer so wait one two three four okay i'm hoping i'm still hidden um um you know what what was your stealth check from the last one 31 31 i mean there's not a lot to hide but um or just hoping to not be noticed <laughs> Yeah, attention at least is not on you, so I'm going to give you the, the um, uh, say that, yeah, you are still hidden, technically, because, like, all focus is down on Barragot. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to, um, take a shot with my crossbow. Right. Go for it. Take your shot. I always tell people, shoot your shot when you can. Yeah, in the words of Michael Scott, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's an 18 and a 15. So 18 plus 9. So that is 27. 27 hit. will hit. Oh my god. Okay. So then that is. Do I get my sneak attack damage? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Malik was not paying attention. He was focused entirely on Baragon, so he was not paying, did not notice you at all. Awesome. Okay. Uh, now tell me about this crossbow you're shooting from. Is it magical, non-magical, any cool effects or anything like that? Um, not yet. Okay. Is it magical for damage purposes, though? No. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. No. Okay. Seven plus four four is 11, 12, 17, <clears throat> 21 points of piercing damage. So it's 21 points of piercing damage. Yeah. So from your hidden spot in the darkness and gloom high above this chamber, because you're still on the ceiling, you aim down at Malik, watching him as he focuses his attention entirely on Baragon. You fire your shot. It goes flying through the air, hits him in the shoulder, and sticks there for a moment. You can barely see that that um that arrowhead the bolt head um went into his skin he, he just looks up glances upward and he sees you and he's you see that smile get even bigger and he says i should have known and he just pulls that bolt out from his um shoulder didn't seem to do as much damage to him yeah figured all right i'm gonna use the rest of my movement Oop, nope that's not movement that's movement and one, two, yeah, so that's all six of my movement. And to get by Evian. And then uh, bonus action. I'm gonna dodge. Okay, and bonus hit. action dodge. Yep. Always a good thing to do. Yeah. Okay, that's it for Reese. Um, Via. You're up next. Sure am. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, this tunnel that we've been in with its weird gravity, do I have the sense mm -hmm. that it is modifiable gravity, or do I kind of get the idea magically that affecting gravity wouldn't do what I think it should? Uh, uh, go ahead and make um, an arcana check. Um, that is a 27. You do know that gravity is kind of weird. Um, everything pulls from, you know, the bottom, the, the ceiling, any, anywhere there's stone, that's where gravity pulls from. You could kind of manipulate that in, in your own way if you have strongest point of gravity is towards um, whatever surface is nearby, mm -hmm. right? So will it will it affect things kind of wonky? Yes, but can you also use that to your advantage? Probably. 
Yeah, I say we go for this, because why not? Um, Which gravity spell are you casting? I am considering reverse gravity. Okay. Yeah, so the only thing I'm nervous about with that is it does basically affect- well, everyone's kind of outside of that, it would just be the demons, I think, that would be affected by that, and this. So, uh, <clears throat> let me show this to you guys. So, dead center, I think you guys can see this on the contraption. Uh, it has a 50 foot radius, so I think that should be good for everyone. Because she was trying to center it so it doesn't get everyone, but it does get the demons. She's going to attempt to cast the reverse gravity spell in the center of that contraption. Okay. Big freaking area radius that encompasses almost the entire area um, of this chamber. You cast your spell. We're trying to reverse gravity. Everything in there is going to have to make it looks like dexterity saving try to throws. Grab onto something, yeah. Let's see how this goes. And um, if they cannot, if they do fail, they would take damage like they would during a normal downward fall. How does that work when the gravity is pulling in the reverse direction? Uh, I'm going to describe it in a <laughs> second here, depending on if anybody, depending on who fails. Because this is going to get weird. Okay, uh, Malik rolled a 21. One Spine Devil rolled a 17, another rolled an 11, another rolled a 15. All three of those dudes failed. So, what happens is Malik just clenches his feet somehow and seems to be holding on to the ground itself. And the the um, the reverse the gravity tries to pull him upward, but he's holding on firm. The spine devils, however, the ones that are sitting there manipulating that device, they all just get pulled upward. Now, normally they would like if the gravity was normal, it would like hit the ceiling or something like that. But when they hit that that center point, they just stop and they begin spinning, spinning, spinning because, you know, gravity is up and down and to the sides. And so they're basically in the very center of this chamber, all spinning around 25 feet in the air um, in a weird sort of free fall because you got gravity pushing downward, gravity pushing upward, gravity pushing from the sides. It's insane for these guys. Are they being crushed? <gasps> they're, they're basically being spun so, like, it, they're, the speed is picking up and picking up and picking up. And. What are those things called? What are the. the yeah. <laughs> no, like, they, the ones that they, they, um, they, like, uh, train astronauts in, those. The ones that's like all the different rings and it it flips the chair any which direction yeah 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 i, that, I know exactly what you're talking about yeah that's basically what these things are in right now just spinning and 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 spinning the devil's need to roll a con check for you project i was just thinking that i was like oh no what have i done <laughs> Oh, they're, they're doing that on their turn. 100%. That's exactly what's what about happening the machine? here. <sighs> so the machine, right? the machine, actually, great thing that you mentioned that. The machine is anchored to the ground. You look down and, and you look at it, and it's not being pulled or anything like that. However, at the far end, you can see something is spinning. It's long and spindly. It kind of looks actually like a branch of wood. Like imagine just the end of a tree branch that's just broken off and it has been um, rotting and petrifying. And it's just sitting there spinning. It's still caught within the magical field at the end of it. Um, so that light is still going onward, but um, that thing is spinning too. Nope, I was Sorry, just going to say, ahead. wizards don't really have bonus actions, and I'm saving my reaction in case I need it, so I think that's my turn. I don't really have a reason, I think, to move right now, so I'm just kind of hanging out where I need to be. Uh, Fair get enough. Get it? Because she's on the ceiling, hanging. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hanging. <sighs> um... For, for those of you who actually uh, uh, know me and my show Random Rhapsody, one of the big things is a cult that's looking for these dream roots that Moloch has found. So he actually went to Laropa, my world, and got a dream root and is currently using that. So that's kind of fun. Wait, that is that canon? Him. Did he find one of our dream roots? I don't know. You'll have to find out, <laughs> oh, won't no. you? <laughs> I love when guests bring their canon to our canon. It's great. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Okay. So uh, that's it for you by his turn. I'm have nightmares. Um, next week we. we Next time, next we come to um, initiative order 20. So, of course, he has layer actions. Why wouldn't he have layer actions for this place? Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and roll a d6 real quick because you know that's always fun. We're dealing with fate, fate decides what happens here. <clears throat> and I rolled a two. So, oh boy. the howling winds of pandemonium fills the entire area you're in. So you've all pulled out the, the, that stuff in your ears. Um, you said so, not me. And I said and no, the I wind... did. Anyway. Now, some people retracted that from my state. I believe Christina and uh, uh, Reese both yep. still have their, their earwax. Mm -hmm. Christina think, and Reese was, still have their yeah, earwax? I think it was just the people doing the Wookiee trick who took it out. Okay, so for those of you who don't have your crap in your ears, um, I'm going to need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, we are still in range of Christina's thingy, right? Oh, uh, let me check um, one. Um, yes, uh, thirty feet from me. So a couple of you are. A couple of you are. Turned off, Scotty. Dirty twenty. That is a nat one for Baragon. With, With advantage. I don't have advantage. I'm not Are in range. You, oh, you're not? I'm 35 oh. feet away from, from Vaya. Oh, you're the further oh, yeah. one. The Echo's the closer one. So that's also, I, I need that, uh, you know, wild magic roll from you, Baragon. Nevian had 15. Ooh, and did I proc wild magic on the reverse gravity? Does it? As yeah, I suppose if it if you roll the d20 for it. Yep. So let's go ahead and roll that d20. Um, that's a 17, so yeah, actually it would. Uh, my wild magic, uh, I got 43 and 69. Well, I nice. 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 Not as nice, well, 59. <laughs> okay, let's see here <laughs> for a fighter. Uh, where is fighter? Goddamn. Mm, roughly in the center ish. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with a 43 for that. Um, for the next minute, creatures push you 10 feet away from them when they hit you with an attack. Oh my god, you get ragdolled. <laughs> 69 for the audience um, was kind of un underwhelming. Choose a creature that can hear you. They make a weapon attack or cast a cantrip. Ah. So, had to go with the worst one. And you said 59? Yeah, mm-hmm. You cast Bigby's hand, but it appears as a very <laughs> flexible foot. Ah, I remember this one. Bigby's foot. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I have a foot icon, but I do at least have a, a hand icon. But I think now Christina's going to do a bonus action. <laughs> I do believe commanding the foot is a bonus action. I believe nice. so, actually. Um, anyway, um, so what happens at the end of this howling madness? Um, it fills your ears and assaults your senses with a cacophony of maddening moans. Everyone not suffering from wind madness, um, which is everyone but Evian. I'm sorry, so Evian, you actually don't need to worry about this one because you have a, a first level of wind madness. But everyone else is going to be taking 16 points of psychic nope. damage if you rolled under a 17, or half of that if you succeeded. All right, I succeeded, woo! And that's the only thing that happens on uh, initiative order 20. We now come to a spine devil that's literally spinning like a gyroscope in the middle of this chamber. So I'm going to, of course, make him roll a con saving throw to see whether or not he vomits. <laughs> and he rolled a nat 2. Wow. A uh, nat 1 for a 2, I should say. Um, absolutely a failure. You just see this dude, this spine devil, spinning like a top, and then he just vomits. And the vomit goes flying <laughs> everywhere about. But it's in the gravity, so he's basically creating a... Uh, uh, a, uh, a bubble. Uh, what is it? Uh, a, a Saturn's ring oh. of pure vomit oh, spinning ew. around <laughs> this dude. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say that that's the only thing he can do on his turn, because dear God, what else could you do on your turn? I feel like. <laughs> 
That's so right. upsetting. So I asked this question in the chat. I see Moloch is next on the turn order. I didn't have the tiebreaker on, so technically Moloch and I both rolled an 18. I have a plus four to dex, which is what it should have calculated with the tiebreaker. So you have a plus four for dex, and he also has a plus four for dex. So we're going to do rollies. Um, right. Roll a d20. Whoever gets higher is going to um, gonna get to go next. I got lucky 13. Lucky 13, he rolled a 14. Oh, darn. You can look it right there. Yep. So Malik is definitely going first. I tried, everybody. Um, you, you did. You did. You tried. And that was a good, solid effort. Um, Public defender. <laughs> a lawyer shows you know, up and tells Malik that he's out. he doesn't have the contract for this. <laughs> <laughs> did you get the right permits for this ritual, sir? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He is legally bound to not harm me. <laughs> no, he's legally bound not to seek retribution on you. Yeah, yeah, to oh. seek retribution. You, you, you him. showed up, not him. So yeah. that's that's totally fine. Now, um, <laughs> as far as the reverse gravity goes, um, he succeeded, so it didn't do anything to him. So I don't think there's any effects at the start of his turn. Does not look like it from the text. So that's good to go. Um, yeah, you know what? He's feeling very confident. He didn't bother to use um, any of those pesky legendary actions because he was just more amused by this whole situation. But now he's going to be moving forward. Five, ten... And he's coming straight up to you, Baragon. Um, your entire group is right there. Um, he, clear as day. And you just see him open his mouth and begin to inhale. At which point, he then exhales. Ooh, and wait, is in this a, a spell? It is not a spell. <sighs> okay, I don't think that works for this then. I have a reaction I could maybe do. Yeah, so it's pretty much just getting everybody in this area right in front here, um, except for, Reese, you're still on the ceiling, correct? Yes. So you are 50 feet above this 30-foot cube, so you are not affected. However, for I need... For the record, to... my echo is also on the ceiling. It is also on the ceiling, so that would not be affected either. I just, I'm going to put reminders here. You are 50 feet there. You are... 50 feet there. Perfect. Um, so everybody else, Avian, Baragon, Pemdas, and this chain devil who was stupid enough to be caught next to you all, all have to make a wisdom saving throw again. Man, it's all but wisdom. At least it's advantage for everyone but Barry. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, DM, I don't think that this text works, but I want to check with you. Uh, one reaction taken when a creature you can see makes an attack roll or starts to cast a spell. That doesn't sound like it would apply here, right? Yeah, this is this is neither a, a spell or an attack. Well, it's an action is all this is, okay. and it's just an exhalation. Cool. So I would say no. All right, so I rolled a 13 plus 3. I suspect that might not pass, so I'm going to use one of my... Uh, built for success things, which is I don't think it's even an, I don't think it uses an action, I just use a charge of it yeah, I just, whenever I roll a skill check if I think I'm going to pass, I can add that d4 so so, uh, is it only for skill checks? skill, this skill is a checks, saving ability throw. checks saving throws, looking for it uh, yep, abil attacks, ability checks and saving throws, basically anytime I roll okay, a d20 then, then yeah, absolutely go ahead and hit, roll your d4 All right, that, that brings me up to an 18 Okay. That is a failure. Damn. Who else do Kevin we have? got 18. 18 failure. Got a 7. <laughs> failure. Oh, funny, that one passes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it's weird, Don't right? forget about your uh, luck still... points! Oh, oh, yeah, you guys... oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we could use the luck points for that. Oops. Oh, I, should have, I shouldn't have uh, said failure then. But... Well, I was going to assume that a 7 wasn't going to make it. <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like you Marty at least know. had a fighting chance of using his luck points. The rest of us just assumed it was probably okay. I'll, I'll well, allow you, M Marty. Go ahead and roll your... Well, here's the thing. Paul, you got what, an 18? Yeah, I got an 18. And that still didn't pass? True. It. I think it might literally be impossible for me, for me to uh, pass this save. You mm. can make a nat 20. <laughs> I could make a nat 20. You could crit. I've been known to do that from time to time. Hmm? What's your wisdom modifier? Um, 
<laughs> plus zero. Yeah, so... Yeah, so you, you can have, wait, did they still have my bardic inspiration? Did you give me bardic yeah, inspiration? Yeah, she did before the break, which was right when you were being held prisoner. So I feel like you definitely have it because it lasts for ten minutes and we just walked over here. Oh. So yeah. yeah okay. so, well, I'd say sure. Yeah, so cash in a luck you know point, what? roll sure. your bardic, hope for the best. That sounds like a plan to me. What's your bardic, um, heavy on? Uh, it's, uh, 1d10. Woo! D10. Yeah, that could do okay. it. All right, so D twenty roll is a seventeen. Hey. Okay, so that is seventeen so, flat. So the D ten could put you to pass. I got a five on the D ten, so that's twenty two. Twenty two. You succeeded. Yes. Woo! Oh. So for those oh. who Holy failed, you're going to take 26 points of psychic damage as this uh, breath of despair washes over you. Um, anyone who failed also is going to be frightened for one minute. While frightened in this way, a creature must take the dash action and move away from Malik by the safest route available on each of its turns, unless there is nowhere to move, in which case they don't need to take the dash action. If a creature ends its turn in a location where it doesn't have line of sight on Malik, the creature can repeat the saving throw. On the success, the effect ends. So I know Baragon, you fail, you succeeded, so you're good. Pemdas, you failed, so you are now frightened. Evian, you, uh, what did you, you also failed? Mm, yeah, I also got an 18. Okay, well, you are already frightened. Yeah. But now you're also frightened of Malik. Cool, cool. Also, yes. how did quick... also, also one more thing, uh, just before yes. then you can ask your question. The the um, chain devil also failed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and so he is also terrified of Malik and takes the full amount of damage. Um, do I still take like half damage on even though I passed this? Yes, you do. You still take half damage. That's 13 points of psychic damage. But you are not frightened, which is a good thing. Since, um, the Bardic Inspiration worked out well, I want to burn another Bardic thing as, for Infectious Inspiration and pass it on to Padmas. Oh, that happens when it passes? Yeah. Yes, nice. when I pick creature... In Within 60 feet of you, and pass, so, succeed, something. So, question. It can move to... Technically, Baragon used that at the same time. Can I roll the D10 to try and pass? Because I got that at the same time we were doing the saving throws. Uh, I think it happens as an after effect. So okay, that's why I was checking. Yeah, it's Continue. more of a reaction. That's why I was yeah. checking. But you have that for next time. Cool, cool, cool. So next time is thing. five seconds, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. It's true. Um... Let's see, that was Malik's action. That was his, uh, I think I moved 20 feet um, to right there, so I'm just going to have him move right down here, right next to you, Baragon, who technically still is roped up, that I guess? Strange. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I... he's just going to leer down at you and smile. To be fair, I feel like since we were tying Baragon up, we would have, like, fake tied him up where he could easily get free. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like, he looks tied up. He is not actually bad. Easily get free anyway. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like we we did lay look that way. All right, so but my action has yeah. turn. So my action has to be the dash action, yes. Yes, it All has right. to be the dash so action. I'm going to use quicken spell to make a one of my spells a bonus action. Now I had a wild magic effect, but I can use that for one point instead of two, right? That was one of the two um, my magics I had. Yeah, it was the one that it, if it, it's only one point. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. So I'm going to burn a sorcery point. And I'm going to cast Synaptic Static, targeting Moloch, as I ask him to give me the square root of pi, please. And you see a bunch of ethereal equations form for me and spiral around Moloch. And so I, I need, like it. I need Moloch to do some fucking math and make a saving throw. <laughs> and cast it to go from the chat. Nope, it, it rolled the damage. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, my, uh, it is. Uh, Paul, I do want to point out though. Saving throw. It's a range. So yeah, you would have had to dash first, so go well, ahead and move you guys, your... You didn't specify when I have to do it. I can use a bonus action before my action on my turn. Okay, when it, frightened in this way, the creature must make the dash action and move away from Malak by the safest route available on its turn. It doesn't specify I, I, when. I feel like... 
Yeah, you're right. It doesn't specify when, but it is a ranged spell, so it would have mattered either way. Is all my point. Oh, yeah. I I meant I meant the the spell itself is twenty foot cube. Twenty foot I mean, sphere. Put, sphere. I, yeah. Yeah. I put it behind Malik. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you, way you would Malik be able in. to do that. And if any demons behind him are making intelligence saving throws, good for them. I, I don't <laughs> oh. see where the tokens are on the map, Here, so... 20 foot radius. 20 foot radius? Yeah, Oop. it is an intelligence saving throw. Okay. My DC is... Do, 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 covered by the spell description. Spell save DC is 20. Okay, so it looks like even even if I positioned this right, it would not hit that guy, the guy spinning, because he's 25 feet in the air, and the radius is 20 feet. Yep, that's fine. I was mostly trying to hit Malik. Yeah, but let's go ahead and see what Malik does. Um, intelligence saving throw. He rolled a 24, so that's a success. Now, question. Did, did he have that, like, magic resistance or something that made him roll advantage, or is that just a flat? Well, um... Because if he rolls see. advantage, I can't even actually Actually, technically, he does have advantage on saving throws because he has magic resistance. That 24 was his first roll. Okay, so I don't... Um, so his second roll was lower than that, but still a 24. Yeah, so, yeah, so if I negated his advantage, he would just keep the 24. Not worried about it. He would have just kept the 24, All right, well, he yeah. takes 16 damage because he does take half. Okay, 16 points of damage to Malik. First time bloodying him this combat. And uh, let me just time. look at my dice rolls on the damage really quick. I did roll a 6, so he takes an extra d6 of damage halved because of the wild magic effect. So I'm just going to roll that 6. It's a 5, yep. so he takes 2 extra damage. Oh yeah. 2 extra damage. Hey, and whittling then, him down. And did my spell proc wild magic before I have to move? Definitely not. Nope, so I'm going to scoot ahead... Uh, Two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to turn off my eye lights so I can't see him, and repeat my saving throw. <laughs> uh, now, technically, you do still have your movement because you use your no, action I, yeah, to I, dash. I, oh, then I have to use my movement to move as well, or do I just have to dash? Do you have to? Um... Or am I only compelled to take the dash action and move and move away from Malik by the safest route available in these turns? I'm gonna say That's that in this answer. instance, because you you are turning off your eyes, literally, because you're an auto gnome, um, you're you're making so you don't have line of sight on him. So no, you do not have to use your movement if you don't want to. Yeah, I'm gonna chill back but here, it's... and my light my lights are off, so I get to repeat the saving throw. Do, 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 do. That is a fourteen plus three plus a d10. Where's my D10? There it is. 14 plus... plus so 14 plus 3 is 17, plus 8 is 25. Yes. That does succeed. Eat shit, Malik! <laughs> <laughs> so, frightened of him for a little bit, but now, with your eyes closed, that effect is gone. I'm allowing you to do this because you're literally turning off your eyes as an auto-gnome, but squinting your eyes to keep them closed probably wouldn't work as well. But, hey... It worked, so that's it. You doing anything else with those movements? Uh, you said that's it? Uh, so, do I have the ability to move after I pass the saving throw, in which case I'll move back to where I was standing? Uh, Otherwise, I'll stay here. Like I, I'll just stay there. Yeah. I think it's fine. Okay, okay. cool, cool, cool. Well, next up, we have a Chain Devil. Um, and the Chain Devil is quite literally terrified of Malik as well. Um, so he has to use his dash action to get away. Is terrified of Malik, but looks down and sees you right there, Pemdas. Um, you hear his voice uh, saying, You, you weren't... Uh, Delivering Baragon, you tricked me! Damn you! I'm coming for you. I did deliver him. I just didn't tell you why I was delivering him. Um, he's not going to use his movement. He's going to stay right where he is. But he is still terrified of Malik. Um, next off, we have the Spine Devil, who's also just spinning in place in the reverse gravity. So let's make him do a con saving throw. Which is a 13. I'm gonna... Uh, what, what's your spell save, DC? 18. Um, 18, yeah. I'm gonna say that's not enough. Um, 
so he's vomiting as well. It's not nearly as the bad as the guy who rolled a one. The, poor guy got a one. Yeah, that poor guy that got a one, he's just living in his own filth. The other guy is vomiting and is kind of flying about, but he still has his his action. Um, he, he's kind of hanging there. Um, he also has flight, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm gonna flight? say that. What's that? They have flight. They, have, they do have flight. Yeah, how does that work devils. when you're trapped inside of a gravity well? Well, you can't go down, you can't go up, but there is that plane in the middle that you can actually move. You can counteract the spinning effect, and that's it. You can't move anywhere. So he's going to have to use his action to try to, you, you know, stop the spinning and um, get level. I'm giving him a chance for this. He doesn't have a great chance, but he's got a chance. That's fair. But with a nat 20 yeah. for a 22, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that, yes, he somehow pulls his arms back, those wings puff out, um, grabs onto the wind and the spinning, and he's able to level himself out. He only can f he can fly about 40 feet, so it's not like a lot of space. He's trying to get to the edge, trying to get, oh, or, well, he wouldn't know where the edge is, because, like, it's invisible and all, but he's trying to get to the people that, you know, cast the spell, which uh, um, is Vaya, so he's going to at least go this way. Vaya's moderately impressed by the flying skills and shouts out at that devil in Infernal, just honestly rather impressive. <laughs> good, good flying skills. <laughs> Thank you, I spend a lot of time in wind tunnels. As he's trying to, you know, make himself a hover. But that's going to be it for his turn. Uh, Baragon, you are at least pretending to be tied up. Um, your hands are kind of bound, and it sort of looks like that. Um, you got a clone on the ceiling, and uh, a big old devil staring down at you. What do you want to do? I look, I look up at Moloch, and I say... Hey there, handsome. And I s bonus action swap places with my echo. The echo is immediately unrestrained, and I'm going to take my attacks from the echo's position. I like it. First attack is a 22. 22 is going to hit. Okay, I'm just going to roll these all and add up the damage at the end. Second attack 21. 21 will also hit. Third attack. Natural 20. Ooh, you <laughs> just see it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And roll that uh, wild magic. Uh, I really hope I get something juicy on this. I'm really hoping for 100. Because I know what that one is. Now, I want the one that gives you an extra right? attack action whenever you take the attack action. That would be juicy right now. That's also true. Okay. 77 and 53. We keep, we keep getting 77 a lot, guys. <laughs> right? I get 57 a lot, and that's that, like, disintegration one. And it's very strange. Okay, so... Okay. So you said 77 and 53? Yes. Both of them are kind of cool. I'm going to allow you to choose one of them. You Ooh. can either... Um, all for the next minute succeed on all your grapple attempts or for the next um uh, for the next minute your opportunity attacks do not count cost a reaction do you want to grapple or do you want to uh react grapple okay so what happens is as you're holding your weapon slicing into malik suction cups form on oh, yeah, your fingers one. and on your all, all over your hands so yeah for the next minute all of your grapple attempts succeed okay uh for the damage i'm gonna i'm counting out all my dice because i hit three times one of them was crit mm -hmm. um so roll your, just go ahead and roll your crit first and then double that okay uh my crystal longsword does a d8 of slashing and a d8 of radiant so that's 2d8 on each hit mm -hmm. so that would be 4d8 on this crit well you would roll your 2d8 and then you would double it yeah we're doing oh okay i see we're doing the simple double method simple double oh that's good that's 15 plus 5 20 damage double to 40 right? okay 40 or do we not 
double the modifier. So it'd be no, you don't double the modifier, 35. just the dice. So 35. Okay, so 35. 35. So 35 points of damage, half of that radiant. And for the other normal attacks, 12 plus 10, 22 damage. Pretty big series of hits from Baragon wielding that crystal sword. Um, Malik looks irritated, to say the least. He's still swatting and, away numbers. Yeah, still swatting away those those uh, annoying numbers that were flying around him. Do you have anything else you want to do on your turn? Oh, do I have any good? I've already used my action and my bonus action. I am not going to move away from him and take an opportunity to attack. So. Okay. That's my turn. Then at the end of your turn, we're going to go ahead and let Malik take the first of his legendary actions. Um, and he's going to be attacking you with his many tailed whip. This That's is, a 19 to hit. This is an attack roll, it though, right? Me. Yes. This is an attack roll. Okay. I would like to use a reaction that <laughs> I haven't gotten to use yet, really quick. Um, okay. What's your reaction? She casts Temporal Shunt. Uh, you target the triggering creature, which must succeed, which is taken when a creature you can see makes an attack roll or starts to cast a spell, uh, which must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or vanish, being thrown to another point in time and causing the attack to miss or the spell to be wasted. Um, and then at the start of its next turn, the target reappears where it was or in the closest unoccupied space. It doesn't remember me casting like a spell or being affected by it. Interesting. So you, you see Malik pulling that whip back, about to swing at Baragon, you react and cast that temporal shunt. Let's see if he can succeed. And it appears, since everything's physically showing up as well, but normally, so she throws like a bladed feather from her uh, wing, but it appears like the hand of a clock. I like it. Unfortunately, with a 28, Malik is definitely going to succeed. <sighs> I tried. Um, I now, does the 19 hit you, Baragon? It does, and my echo has one hit point, and that would be the hit. Then you trade places okay. with your echo, though. The echo's back on the ceiling. No, the echo was on the ceiling. Oh, okay. It, it, yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. I got, it. I got on backwards. the ground. Yep. So, um, he slashes through the, um, the clone, um, the echo. It poofs out of existence. Um, Malik just growls in anger and frustration, and then looks up and sees you there on the ceiling. I blow him a little kiss and give him the people's wink. <laughs> the people's wink. Nice. Ting! Okay. Um, that's it for Baragon's turn. Next up, we have this poor imp that was trying to, um, you know, keep an eye down the, the corridor and um, really failed and kind of got freaked out by part of his cover being blown away. Yep. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Why would an imp want to have anything to do with this fucking battle? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. He's an imp. If I'm not like, yo, you guys know Asmodeus is hiring, right? Oh, he is? Really? Yeah! Um, you see him turn invisible. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just gonna go ahead and fuck off. <laughs> see ya. I mean, let's be honest. He's an imp. What the hell is he going to yeah, do in this? What's he doing here? What are you doing here, man? I honestly yeah. don't blame him. <laughs> At one bit. No, no. It's it's 100% fail. Uh, you just hear, later, suckers, I'm out. And he goes flying off. <laughs> Uh, other Spine Devil, the last one that's still kind of spinning there, um, he's got to make his con saving throw, too. Thirteen. Still not great. Um, same thing as the last one, so he definitely vomits. <laughs> and it's just spinning all <laughs> over the place. Um, uh, it, he is not doing too great, but he is going to try. He is going to attempt to straighten himself out like his buddy managed to do. But with a 15, I'm going to say that no. He's still throwing up. He's still spinning. Um, he, he's, he's just kind of stuck there and fucked up. And he really can't move a whole hell of a lot because he's just gyrating out of control. So he's got nothing this turn. Evian, you're up next. As I start to shift into blur, uh, I yell out to Moloch. You brought this doom upon yourself and try to cast an, uh, burn an inspiration for unsettling words. 
I mean, the audience yeah. at home, Unsettling Words is a bard feature where Sarah can burn a, one of her bardic inspirations and reduce Moloch's next saving throw by a d10. Like it. Nice. Yeah. So let's keep that in mind for Moloch's next saving throw. I'm going to so give him a that, little green dot. And then I'm just going to blur myself. So it, was that a bonus action for yeah. the Unsettling Words? Yes, it is. Yeah, that nice. was a bonus action. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then if Sarah's casting and... spell blur, does she proc wild magic? That's a good question. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, and does that happen before or after uh, oh, my yeah. nat one? Oh yeah, the oh, nat one, one effect. We're probably Sarah's turn. That's right. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Sorry, I do apologize. No, you're good. I'm helping. Got a lot of stuff going on right here. Um, you oh, rolled yeah. an eighty and a ninety on that. Yeah. Table. <laughs> what, are you, what are you again? Are Bard. you a sorcerer? Bard. 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 That's it. Duh. Oh yeah, I remember this now. This is going to be really, really fucking fun. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> what I would... I, I, we're going to say that that happened... Um, well, let's just say it happens right now because it's more fun this way. Um, so what I need for you, Evian, is to roll a d6 for me. Okay. How's a five sound? A five sounds great. Um, so immediately as you're running away trying to get back from the group and Pendas is calling out, wait, 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 there's a there's a, a, a devil right there. You stop and you look directly at him as you're ca um, getting ready to cast the blur spell. Um, mm -hmm. And you each cast command on each other. <laughs> oh. Because uh, you and the nearest creature cast command, and since there's three of you kind of close, we went with that. So you and Pemdas are going to cast command on each other. Hmm. How is that going to work? Well, Pemdas said wait. Yeah, I Evian. feel like that's my casting command. <laughs> said what? And I don't know what the chain <laughs> was going to say. Well, the chain, de the chain devil is not the other target for the Yeah, command. it's not the target. Right. It's what just the target of to each do? other. I, I have a funny idea. If you tell Pemdos to run, I can use the movement I didn't use to run up to the ceiling. <laughs> I was going to thinking, just run. I'm like, I should get out of, get out of Dutch, <laughs> yeah. dude. So can we flavor okay. this as I just voluntarily fail to save and then run up run around the wall to the ceiling? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to allow it. You can run at least 30 feet o over to here and then start to go up it. So you're probably about, um, that was 10 feet there, so you're probably 20 feet up on the side of the seal of the side of the wall. All right. <laughs> so you just wait, and then he goes running, and then you cast your blur spell. Woo! Because why the hell not? <laughs> That's some wild stuff happening. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Um, well, uh, that was it for your turn. Now, as um, another legendary action, Malik is going to... Um, let's say Malik is going to use his teleport action. So he disappears from where he's standing and appears right here behind uh, you, Baragon, on the ceiling. So that's about... Mm -hmm. 50 feet up right now. So right next to uh, Reese and Baragon. So Reese, what you doing? Malik just appeared right next to you. Um, so uh, I'm gonna try something probably stupid. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast Blight at Malik. Malik does have a minus oh, to his saving throw. Yes. Mm -hmm. And does he have? Disadvantage now, or oh, is that no, a different? Thing? He has advantage on saves against spell, spells, but I can negate it. Sure, I'll negate the advantage of my reaction. Um, washes over a creature you have your choice. You see within range. They make a con saving throw. Um, on a failure, they take the 88 necrotic or half as much on a save. Okay, so con saving throw from Malik. And I'm restoring balance. He does not get his magic resistance advantage. Okay, so it is just a straight roll, and then minus a d10. And minus a d10. 
So he rolled. Or higher. He got a twenty-five. Yes. Um, that subtracts a one, Can so that's I going to be a twenty-four. Use one of my luck points to make him roll again. I believe luck only works on you. No, but uh, does anyone else have silvery barbs in the reaction? I already used my reaction. Oh. I have. I'll use my silvery barbs. Um, I was gonna say, Christina, I, do you have chronal shift? Uh, oh, no, yes, I do. We, we can just silvery barbs it with Sarah's thing, though. Say the chronal shift or something okay. else. You can also s oh when an attack roll is made against you. Okay, never mind. Okay, so um, you're, who's using silvery barbs? Uh, Sarah's character is. So, okay. Yeah. So Evian is using silvery barbs to try to make him re-roll it. Um, nope. He rolled even higher. <laughs> but does Sarah proc wild magic? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I love this gimmick. No. That's a four. <laughs> no. Oh, well. Wait, does, that, the does, does the silvery barbs yep. only make him re-roll the d20 or also the d10? Yeah. Just it would just the be d20. the d20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but go ahead and roll your damage, yeah. and he's at least going to take half of that. Okay. It is necrotic, yeah. but he does not. Ooh, okay. okay. So 45 points of necrotic damage halved. 45, half of that, that would be 22 points of damage. So not bad. You cast your um, your spell blight. The necrotic energy hits him and um, seems to take a little bit of that vitality away. But Moloch is strong and pumps and holds back from it, and he does succeed. Yeah. And so he only takes half that damage. Is that the end of your turn, or do you have anything else? You want um, to do? bonus action disengage. <laughs> And then I'm going to start uh, running for the floor. Okay. Well, you are on the ceiling, so you'll have to go around and down. Don't forget. Yep. yep. I mean, you could always just voluntarily take the 5d6 fall damage. <laughs> you could. Actually, I'm not sure how that would work, because gravity is pulling backwards. So I don't think you actually could do that. Oh, well. Because gravity literally pulls from every surface away from the center of the, the room. I probably can't jump high enough to trick it. No, nope, no. Nope, nope. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I am 30 feet closer to the floor. Okay. Um, you disengage as your bonus action. You're 30 feet closer to the floor. You're probably still about a good 35 feet up, okay. but you're getting there. Anywho, um, that's it for your turn. Um, yeah, you know, Malik, he is going to go ahead and use up another legendary action. Yeah, you know what? He, he's uh, just going to go ahead and wail on Baragon because he is just absolutely pissed off at this guy. <laughs> That's a 20 to hit. That does hit. That does hit. So 13 points of slashing Ooh, can damage. I, can mm -hmm. I use a luck point to make him re-roll that? Since so, we've determined that yeah. when an attack roll is made against me, I can use a luck point. You can that's what it says. Oh, we're attack roll made against you, can, you again? I didn't know that. Yeah, it says whenever you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a oh. saving throw, or when an attack roll is made against you, you can spend one luck point to roll an additional d20 and you choose which die to use. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you can spend one luck point when an attack is rolled against you, is made against you, roll the, so you go ahead and you roll that d20, because you're going to be able to do it. Oh, I roll it? it yeah, says, you it roll says a you d20. Do. Okay. And um, Moloch's got a plus five, it looks like, according to rule 20. He's got a plus 15. Oh, 15. Oh, he, he oh. only rolled a five on the die. Nice. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, all right, well, I just made the attack better. Uh, worse for me, so. Yeah, well, it would have hit either way. Um, so 13 points of slashing damage, 14 points of lightning damage, and oh, I need you Jesus. to make a strength saving throw. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter because you're right next to him anyway. But just roll it strength anyway, just to see what happens. 29. 29 is better than his tw the DC, so it tr the chains try to wrap around you, but you just kind of jump up, and um, it goes underneath you, but it, you still take the damage. Doesn't Baragon mm -hmm. have a thing because of on him for a while, because of the wild magic, that whenever he's attacked, he's shoved 10 feet away from his attacker? That's true. <laughs> Molly pushes him back and uses the whip to pull him back in play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. So as he hits it, it knocks Baragon back. He goes skidding. Um, the th and the things try to wrap around him, but actually he seceded, so it wouldn't have. Oh. So you would be moved 10 feet, probably about right there. Yeah. Okay. 
I was going to put me in the gravity well. Well, you're up, <laughs> you're Oops. above the gravity well. Oh, that's right. No, that's a hundred foot. That's everywhere. Oh, okay. Um, I, if, oh. if Matt was smarter, he would have probably pushed you into that. But uh, Matt moved you ten feet in an angle, so that's where you're at. <laughs> that's okay. Um, that's it for uh, uh, for the Reese's turn. Via, you're up next. Okay. Does it look like anything's happening with the machine, or is it just kind of not really doing anything because no one's manning it? So because no one's manning it, the, the light does not seem to be getting more intense. It seems to be kind of at a standstill. Okay. That light is still radiating out into that fractal of time, and, but it doesn't seem to be getting much bigger. It's just kind of hovering there, partially open. All right. Uh, in that case, Vio will kind of get the idea that maybe dealing with Moloch is a smarter thing to do at the moment. And so she is going to uh, firstly use her bonus action to fist Moloch with the foot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whoa. Which <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have yeah, realized um, is horrible <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> no, you, you know, no, you use your giant foot to kick him in his giant dick. Hey, you know what? I mean, nobody keeps shapes here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> um, it says that hand strikes one creature or object. Uh, I'll have it move so it's within the five feet of Moloch, and it's a melee spell attack for it using your game statistics. Uh, let's move the fist first. Uh, oh, I gotta select the clicky part. Uh, let's move the fist here to Moloch, and then. Um... Oh, that's the fist. I thought it was a rock. <laughs> that's the foot. It just right moved, there. and I went. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> there wasn't a foot token readily available. I have a plus twelve. You, you, you know, I plan for a lot of things, but I was not planning for a big bee's hand as a foot. Well, the big bee's hand got a nat twenty. I don't know if we're gonna count that for wild yeah. magic. <laughs> yes, the way Bard Rock Cafe does that is if something that's an extension of you gets a natural twenty. It counts. <laughs> the wild magic Dear triggers God some wild heaven. magic. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it, it doesn't really matter, but just because I think it's a fun number. That's a 32 to hit Moloch with the fit, <laughs> with the foot. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I suppose I'll allow it to hit. Yeah. I was thinking about not doing it, but you know what? Can, you, you, got the, you got the 32. So can we flavor not? it like it actually did crotch shot him since it's a foot? <laughs> <laughs> it, because you rolled a nat 20, I'm going to say that yes. You fly that foot over there and kick him straight in the crotch. <laughs> Roll that damage. Great. Okay. Um... You, you, you just message our regular GM, letting him know that Biggie's buying a foot just kicked Moloch in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Okay, and you double your damage, right, for crits? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, so you, roll, you double the dice. Oh, so I'd roll eight instead of that, or I just double the number they roll? You, you roll your dice and then double the number. Okay. I've seen it done both ways, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so I rolled 22 damage, so doubled to 44. 44 points of damage. Huge croc shot that j he, like, almost wants to drop the, the the whip. He barely is able to hold it on. Both hands go right to his groin, and he just lets out a pitiful moan. And then immediately following that, you see that uh, Vaya takes her hands um, as she's standing on the ceiling and holds them to her head, and she's looking at Moloch, and in Infernal, she's like, you should know better than to mess with time. There's so many different timelines, and none of them turn out good for people who do things that are wrong. And she's casting Rowl with them, Psychic Lance at him, um, and uses in that she says, you should know better, Moloch. And by using Moloch, he is the target. <clears throat> um, well, before you do that, let's get that wild magic oh, search. That's, for that's the correct. The, the Digby's foot yeah. does trigger that. So that is, oops, yep. that's not a D100. That's a D12. Hold on, let me reroll those. <laughs> 41 and 57. You gain resistance to damage from all schools of magic except evocation for the next hour. I'll take it. Nice. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Did we... The wizard just gained armor. Yeah, so as you nut kick uh, <laughs> poor Malik and he's gr just howling in pain and kind of flicks you off as, as you're saying that, suddenly your entire body starts shimmering with magical light and you basically have a force field around you. I dig it. Now, is it me or the foot that has that resistance? No, it's you. Okay. It's 100% you. All right. You. <laughs> Great. But now go ahead and cast your spell. What spell did you say uh, again? Ralatham Psychic Lance. And I'm going to upcast this to fifth level. Um, he does have to, where'd it 
go. Uh, make a save. Yeah, intelligence saving throw. Okay, intelligence saving throw. Um, this is this one um, being downgraded, uh, Pentas. Uh, I already used my reaction. I'll get back to my. You're using your reaction, so okay, perfect. Fortunately, I think Malik's pretty dumb. Um, that's a nineteen. Well, so I have a reaction I can use. It's not a spell. Um, so at the same time as that happens, you see that like her hand twitches on her head, and she'll use her second chronal shift. Um, I would like to force him to reroll, please. <laughs> Which means we could technically keep the eight, but that's up to the DM. No, that's because it is added yeah. advantage, so he did count those two. Okay. So it's just going to be one more basic ro straight roll. But that was an 18, which still technically <sighs> succeeds. Yeah, that meets. Damn. All right. Yeah. But um, 15 points of psychic damage. Yep, yep. Half, half as much damage and isn't incapacitated. So yeah, 25 to half. That's okay. The foot did a cool thing. <laughs> cool. Foot did a hell of a lot of damage. <laughs> um, and then I'm not immediately like near anyone that I think can engage me, but it's getting a little heated over here. So I'm gonna run across the ceiling um, to get a little further away from what the, the heck's going on over here. Luckily, you are going way above where that chain devil is. You're nowhere within range. But... Nope. <laughs> After uh, Via, we have the layer action. Um, you know, gotta love the layer action. The next one that comes up is the winds that were howling, that maddening howl, begins to pick up strength and intensify, whipping around the chamber with such force that it threatens to pull everyone off of their feet. I need everybody of a medium size or smaller to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Including all of the devils. <laughs> How about the ones that are floating? Do they do that any differently? Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's hitting them it's too. it's around more. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 26 for Vaya. <sighs> 22 for Kremdas. I got a 13! Ooh. You can spend a luck point if you want. Wait! Yeah, I'm doing the luck point. How's that even worse? Oh. So, you technically can spend luck points multiple times if you really want to. It's up to you. I'll do another one. This is... silly. That's the same! Ah! Yeah, that's unfortunate. Evian is not feeling lucky. Yeah. Here's what happens. Um, for those of you who rolled under a, a, a 19, um, you are thrown by the winds in a random direction, about 20 feet. So I need you to roll a, well, D8 to see what direction you go. Five. Three. So the way I do random, is um, basically I go from the top left square and count around clockwise. So if you roll to five, you would go... 10, 15, 20. But fortunately, um, as long as you don't hit like a side or anything like that, you're not going to be knocked prone. Oh, do I need to do this for the foot too? Uh, no, not for the foot. The foot's a magical okay. thing. <laughs> Okay, so a as you go skidding off in that direction, you kind of hit that curve and slam against it. So um, you are going to take eight points of bludgeoning damage, and you are currently knocked prone on the side of the ceiling. Okay. Next off... Oh, I forgot. All the, all the spine devils failed, so I need to roll d8s for them. So he goes flying off this way. This guy does right here, hits the wall, smashes against the wall. Um, he is going to take those, uh, that damage. Oops. That's eight points of damage. This guy here smashes into this guy. We're doing pinball stuff now. Mm-hmm. We 100% are. So they're going to take 13 and 12 points respectively. He's all, the other guy's also going to go flying. So yeah, a lot of weird stuff going on in this game. These uh, spine devils are pinballing off of each other, being held in the center of this um, 
this floating sphere of just pure uh, gravity. Malika, not so much bothered by all this. The yeah. idea moves um, Gaia for completely incapacitating three of the mooks. <laughs> yeah, for real. I was hopeful it would help if we didn't have to deal with the additional three uh, devils. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, it's definitely been helping you all out. That's it for that. And um, next up, we have the spine devil who just got pinballed into another one of them. And is sitting there. That's the one that had been spinning and gyrating and had all that puke, like, orbiting him. He's not having a great day. Since he's still spinning, he has to make that con saving throw because, uh, you know, vomit. Uh, that's a 13. That's still a failure. Yes. I've been th I've been thinking in my head, like, he they need to roll a 16 or something like that. You know, something close to the, the spell DC, but it's just to, you know, stop vomiting. So it can be a little better. But still, they've been rolling like shit. <laughs> He's vomiting. He's throwing up. He's spinning around, um, gyrating horribly. I'm going to say that's not enough to, to stop this whole disgusting motion. So he's just stuck there. But then it's Malik's turn. He's on the ceiling. Got people all backing up away from him. He hit Baragon a little bit and had some fun with that. Oh, I need to roll a d6 first. Also, at the start of Moloch's turn, you notice that um, all of the... You've been hitting him with a lot of stuff. A lot of psychic damage, mostly. He's, he's been bleeding from the ears and the nostrils a little bit from this constant assault of psychicness. But um, you see a bit of a shimmer around him. For those of you at home, uh, Malik has regeneration. That mm. happens at the start of his turn. But from there, oh, I, I, what do I want to do? Um, yeah. Does regeneration on devils work if they've taken radiant damage in the previous turn? You know, on some of them, it. I've seen it says they don't, but um, oh, actually, yes, you're right. It is under regeneration. If it. If he takes regeneration damage, this trait doesn't function at the start of his next turn. So yes, you're correct. Thank you. Leading the league in assists for this battle, Baragon Doubledale. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, you're right. Goes, oh, right. Sorry. And he just keeps bleeding more. Someone's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone's going to start typing in the rules lawyer channel in the future, and then they're going to be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> no, the rules lawyers are right here, and they have their law degrees and everything. <laughs> Unauthorized life form detected. I'm not unauthorized, silly. I'm your friendly neighborhood mail robot, and I have a delivery from Minva RPG for you. I did not order anything. Well, it has your name on it, so are you sure it's not yours? But I did not give you my name. You look at the package, and it is, in fact, addressed to Spirit. I take the package then. Campaign journals. Why do I have so many? Why, for all of your personalities, of course. I thought you would want one for each of you so you don't have to share. These campaign journals are perfect for players to track their character info, inventory, spells, and miscellaneous campaign notes. <laughs> I'll mark you down as another satisfied customer. And if you want more, just go to our affiliate link in the show notes and use code BARDROCKCAFE at checkout to save on your order. Scan complete. Data added. Friend request accepted. As the two Warforged finish interfacing, a druid in a straw hat runs by, swinging a pair of boa constrictors wildly like whips, chased by a horde of zombies. Tarnation, I don't think I can baptize them all. A little help? <laughs> Murder protocols activated. Lethal force authorized. I'm just gonna move these journals inside and let you two do what you do best. Bye. Okay, Spirit, you can unload the supplies uh, right here in the galley. Acknowledged. Cargo unloaded. Scan complete. Unknown substance detected. Oh, uh, that's, that's nothing to worry about. That's just our stock of tea and coffee from Many Worlds Tavern. I wanted to stock up while we were at port. You can't get good tea and coffee just anywhere. Correction. You can get tea and coffee delivered from Many Worlds Tavern to many locations 
if you order through their website. And if you use the affiliate link in the show notes, a portion of your order supports the show. Oh, that's right. And you can even save some money on your order by using the code BARDROCKCAFE at checkout. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. You're welcome. I believe the captain said something about finding treasure while we are in port. Should we go find him? Yeah, sure. Who knows what trouble he'll get into by himself. Jake, we've been following your compass for hours. Are you sure you're reading the thing right? Aye, maybe you're right, Miss Polly. Let me try the doubloon of absolutes. I flip the doubloon and lands on heads. With a heads, you get a natural 20. And a wild magic surge. A treasure chest appears before you. That's more like it. I peer inside. Inside, you find an assortment of dice, dice trays, and dice towers. And an inscription in the lid telling you where you can find more. Looks like we can get all this and more from Fan Roll Dice at the affiliate link in the show notes. And with code... Bar Rock Cafe at checkout, we can save on our order. Inside, you also find a picture of the entire crew. What? What's that, Jake? Don't you know, Miss Polly? The real treasure is the friends we made along the way. <sighs> Christina, I'm all caught up in my favorite actual play podcast. What should I do? All of them? Even my podcast, Agents of Damned? That's right. Your show's excellent, but I'm up to date on that one, too. I'm not sure what to check out next. Yeah, I know. There's just so many excellent actual play productions out there, it can be overwhelming to choose one. Not to worry, friends. I can make some recommendations. Oh my gosh, it's multi-talented TTRPG actual play performer and professional musician Marty Ballmer. That's right. Just check out my new podcast, College of Whispers. We're the actual play book club that can help you find your new favorite production. Join me and my co-host Vicky every month as we review and analyze different productions in a spoiler light format that's both entertaining and informative. Wow, that sounds great. You don't just look at the big name productions, right? Yeah, I feel like whenever I ask for podcast recommendations, the same handful of super popular mainstream shows is all I get suggestions for. Not to fear. On College of Whispers, we look at a mix of big names and indie productions, so the scrappy up-and-coming shows can get their moment in the sun as well. Well, I'm sold. I'm going to go download College of Whispers on my favorite podcatcher right now. Thanks, Marty. Wait, Paul, we're part of the Bard Rock Network now. How is any of this news to you? Give them a listen, everybody. Okay, so let's let's just kind of run down through where everybody's at here. PEMDAS, you're still on the floor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I'm on um, the wall. Via, you're on the wall. That's right. You're on the wall on the side. Via, you're still on the ceiling. Um, Reese, you're still on the no, ceiling. No, I'm on the ground now. You're on the ground now? Okay, yeah, because I now. was on the wall, but then I got thrown 20 feet into the middle of the room, so I'm guessing I would have fall into the floor not unless you are flying if you're on the ceiling and you just got pushed along the ceiling as long as you didn't hit that curve you wouldn't have taken damage okay okay so i'm on so you still have been on the ceiling prone. you are still on the ceiling is the ceiling just 35 feet up here though because it's near the mouth of the tunnel yeah okay. evian you're kind of on the side of the wall still if i remember correctly uh, yeah, I'm prone. Yeah, and then Baragon, you're still on the ceiling as well. I am still on the ceiling. I believe Malak is currently also on the ceiling. He is on the ceiling. Yeah. That's that's what I'm I'm trying to get everything in my head so I can do you, you know we're we're dealing with fourth dimension here, so I'm kind of thinking to myself trying to plan this one out. I was going to the lawyer's three dimensions, but the entire premise of the thing is time travel, so technically yes. <laughs> Evian and uh, Reese, I would like the two of you to make dexterity saving throws as a vertical column of divine fire, or, or in this case, abyssal fire, I suppose, since he's Malik, um, um, roars down at you, um, and basically the two of you in this 10-foot radius, so dexterity saving throw as fire and radiant. Why, why, why does flame strike do radiant damage? I don't know. Whatever. Not one. That's... Ooh. Have you used a luck point? You do have your lucky feet. That's 25. Oh, that's true. I could use a luck point. Does anybody have counterspell? Uh, oh, my reaction's burned right Oh, yeah, minus two. Damn. Sorry. 
I'll use a luck point. He 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 he. Eleven. <laughs> Baragon uses counter spell. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. Oh, uh, but I should, I should have done something earlier that would have allowed one of you guys to. Do, it's fine. <laughs> Okay, so anybody who did not roll a 21 or higher on that dexterity saving throw is going to take 5 points of fire damage and 15 points of radiant damage? 5 or 9? Why is a demon 15? 9 and 15. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand why a demon would have a radiant magic ability, but hey, what the hell, why not? I mean, he's, he's also like got weaknesses to radiant magic that is really weird. Well, it, that's... You can always just flavor it as a different kind of damage. Yeah, it, it like, doesn't why is really it not matter. Necrotic? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Why is it not necrotic? But who cares? It doesn't matter. But anywho, um, that was his action. Move a little closer to Baragon. As he l stomps over towards you, he does, leers down at you and he says... Does my foot get an opportunity attack? No, I do not believe <laughs> okay. it does. Does your foot have a second? <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only magic got that stuff. Um, but he walks, just steps over to Malik, or to Baragon, kind of onto the other side, getting you between, um, keeping you between your, your friends and, and him, and uh, he says, I've had enough of this. It's time to end you all and regain my place in the Nine Hells. Pemdas. You're up next. All right, so Pemdas is going to Spider-Man run across the wall over here. You're starting to test oh, my man. patience, Malik, and I would like to cast Mental Prison. I need you to make a DC 20 intelligence saving throw, please. Well, so Malik rolled a 12 on his intelligence saving throw. So he's going to go ahead and choose to uh, um, succeed instead using his first legendary resistance. I figured he would, but he's still going to take... Uh, 5d10 psychic damage halved as he momentarily sees himself trapped inside of a high school classroom taking a math test that he did not study for. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I forgot my calculator. Damn it, I forgot my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and the damage on that, that is a he lot of dice. Oh my god. Oh my god. Nice. Holy yeah. moly. 19 damage. What? I didn't... That's a that's a really weird the, yeah. nineteen on the It said five D ten but then rolled a hundred why did it do that? Yeah, I think that, that's coded I'm wondering wrong. that too. I think there's a mistake in the coding of that of that thing. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody shut up. For the audience. It randomly rolled I'm trying to like look at the uh, map here. It's it, nineteen it plus added 82. the nineteen and the Yeah, it added nineteen plus eighty two. I don't where yeah, where is it getting eight? either? So, Unless you just rolled like a... God so the 82 is 10d10 for some reason? The 19 oh, okay, is so the 5d10. Okay. Yeah. All right, I think I know what happened. Okay, the spell has an effect related to 10d10. On a failed save, huh. he takes the 5d10. If he's moved out of the illusion for whatever reason, or moves part of it through, he takes an additional 10d10, and the spell ends. So that, it rolled oh, the 10d10 yeah. automatically. Yeah. So we only, it only takes okay. the 19. As exciting as that 10 yeah. 10 was. <laughs> Would have been awesome, but okay, but oh well. But um, it's the 19 points of psychic damage, and is that halved? It is, so you is, take 9. Yeah, so 9 points of psychic damage. Alright, and then I'm going to... Do, 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 I'm going to use Quicken Spell and cast Mind Sliver on Moloch. So Moloch, go ahead and make another intelligence saving throw, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh, damn you all, I hate math. <laughs> As I hit him with more ethereal equations. I'm gonna defeat him with the power of math. That is an 11. Um, Let's go. That's another failure. He's not... He, it's, it's a, a cantrip. Can he's gonna let it go through. So he's gonna take... I'll burn it, it's fine. So he's gonna take 4d6, and he has, he has Bane on his next saving throw between now and his next turn. Just 1d4 off the next saving throw he makes. And he's gonna go ahead and take a spicy 14 psychic damage. As I make him solve nice. more math problems, I look at him like a stern middle school teacher. Oh, this math is so confusing. It's all floating around my head. <laughs> Damn it. I hate trigonometry. <laughs> Grandma Calculus says hello, motherfucker. Okay. Um, after Pemdas is the chain devil that's been frightened of Malik. Um, he's on the ground. I don't think anybody else is actually on the ground. Reese is on the, on the ceiling. 
the other two are on the sides. It's uh, 35 feet at the mouth, and he's going. He's only got 30 feet oh. of movement. So I'm gonna say he's basically he's moving up towards you um, with his action. He's not quite close. He's about 10 feet away from you by this point, um, Evian. But that is enough because of uh, he's a chain devil and he's throwing some chains. So it got two just uh, regular melee attacks coming at you, Evian. Okay, uh, just the wall at disadvantage. Roll at disadvantage? Of got it. Yeah. Uh, so the Ooh. first one was a 10. Does that affect both attacks? Uh, yeah, blur should be all attacks. One. Blur attacks? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, blur. Um, second one is a 12, so both miss. Both miss, yeah. And then I want to circle back really quick. I forgot my wild magic effect is still in place, so I did roll the mm. maximum damage on one of those mines liver dice. So now it takes a spicy one more damage. Yeah, what? let's go. He's yeah. dead. <laughs> it's over. Um, so I think that's twice now that we've not done wild magic for my stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> oh. Oh shit! It's okay. We'll just oh, keep yeah. going. Oh, do we turn forward too? Oh no! No, 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 no just... we no we we retroactively it's... fix this all the time. Uh, did you like cast spells and that's what triggered it? I don't well, the blight. We didn't check to see okay. if that, and then I rolled a nat one on my deck save for the. Okay. No, you okay. use a luck point to re-roll that though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Should. That's true. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah it okay. only counts if you keep the roll. That's true. Okay, so, fair. Um, well, I rolled a thirteen, good. so you did not trigger. Thank God, we're good. I'm out for mine prison because I forgot. For PEMDAS. Oh gosh. Uh, nope. That was a two. Wild and magic then for the makes cantrip, things so. That was a twelve. <laughs> and then I don't think we checked for mine either. Okay, let's There's check a lot of one upkeep on you. this. Yeah. Oh no! Oh shit! Oh, 20, yeah. <laughs> Roll a d100. Oh. Wild magic really makes things wild. Holy cow! <laughs> Not... Yeah, it does. Uh, this is either gonna be really cool, really bad, or nowhere in between. Ninety-nine. Oh. Ooh. Those are usually that, really the good. The hundred ones are usually good. Please you succeed on all concentration checks for the next 10 Hell minutes. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. That's really good. Wow. I haven't taken damage, but it's fine. That gravity field's staying up. Nothing's stopping it. <laughs> yeah, this is this episode should be titled Moloch's Minions, Very Bad, No Good, Awful Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, screw Rock Around the Clock. We're going with that. It's Moloch and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad. <laughs> Version two, the second one. Yeah. <laughs> the second one. The squeak one. Okay, the squeak we do wall. got the spine devil. Um, he's against. He, he got hit against the wall. He's still kind of spinning there. It's really weird. Um, but that, oh wait a minute, that's the one that actually managed to right itself. And then he immediately got yes. flung back. And then immediately got flung back. So I'm going to say it's able to probably get out of this um, this field by this point. Um, it's going to take half of his movement because technically it should have been prone. It's kind of weird, but we're going to go with it. So he only got 15 or 20 feet of movement. Um, so that's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 feet of movement to right there. He's finally out of it, flying in the air. But, um, you know, he's fine. He's out of the, the weird gravity. And uh, since he is out of the weird gravity, um, let's go ahead and use the action that I haven't been able to use this entire freaking game with this guy. Um, he's got a range of 20 feet. Is anyone actually in his range? That's the next question. God, no, nobody is. Um, so he's just going to be really, really irritated, um, since he can't do anything else, and throw two of those spines at the giant floating <laughs> foot that's there in the space. Not the Cause, foot. Because, like, foot. what else can he like... do? Can, can you actually hit the so foot? You can. It, it's an object that has an AC of 20, and hit points equal awesome. to my hit point maximum, so it's got 100 hit points. It's a very, very Jesus girthy Christ. foot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a girthy <laughs> foot like that, ki that kicked Malik's giant dick. Uh, 21 actually hits. Yeah, it does. Amazing. Uh, so six points of piercing and four fire, ten points of damage to the foot. Okay. Baragon. Before your turn begins, at the end of that, um, that uh, spine devil's turn, 
Malik is going to go ahead and use his first legendary action because he's getting pissed off and tired of this shit. Um, and he's going to cast, or is he going to attack? Um, he's just going to attack you because he's sick of you. Um, that's a 34 to hit. That misses, actually. Oh, yeah? Oh, you got some extra AC. Awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, that's weird how that happened. No, I mean, honestly, it's not too bad of a damage. Ten points of slashing, six lightning. Pushes Barry away again. Pushes Barry away ten feet. Um, you know what? I'm going to be smart this time. Um, I'm going to f- use that to fling you into the um, the the gravity. So, um, and that at which point the the whips kind of try to get you, get around you. Do you want to succeed or do you want to fail? Can I do the saving throw, and if I succeed, use the whip to get back out of the well? Well, so the thing is, he's going to actually pull you towards him if um, mm-hmm. if you fail. That's just how it works. It doesn't, like, keep you so, grappled or anything, so... But it's not going to grapple me or anything? No, it doesn't say anything about grappling you. Nope. Okay, then I'll just fail the same. So what I, I need mean, you to do, it. as you go flying into the gravity well, I need you to make a kind of saving throw for me. Okay, I'm good at those. 27. Yeah, 27 is more than enough. You're able to hold your lunch as the spinning begins to grab you, but then that whip wraps around your leg. Moloch yanks you back towards him, and you come flying to right about here. Um, you're still kind of spinning a little bit, but you're still in that radius. But then he, he just, yo, yo. Now it's your turn, Baragon. So what do you want to do? All right. I am cir- circling around him going back out of the well and I'm not uh, in the business of fucking around anymore so I'm gonna attack him a bunch first attack plus 10 that's a natural 2 I'm gonna use my last luck point to reroll that it's a 25 good thing you use that lucky point that's gonna hit is a 23 gonna hit as well third attack is a 20. 20 just hits. Okay, I'm going to action surge. Okay, well let's, so let's let, go ahead and keep rolling then. Okay, first or fourth attack, 28. Hits. Fifth attack, 21. Yep. Sixth attack. Oh my gosh. Natural oh 20. Nice. Gosh. Nice. Yes! Oh my so first, we're going to go ahead and roll the five the five uh, hits that are normal, and then I want you to roll your critical. Okay, so this is ten d eight. Yeah, and half of it is radiant plus twenty five. Sixty six damage. Sixty six points of damage for five attacks. And then the crit is four d. No, you just doubled the roll. Oh, two d eight doubled. Sorry, I've got like four shows worth of crit rules. <laughs> oh yeah, it, we all understand. <laughs> uh, okay, the crit is pretty bad actually. That's uh, eight plus five, thirteen, for a total of seventy-nine damage on those six attacks. And I'm gonna roll my wild magic before I forget. Fourteen and ninety-nine. Ooh. Okay. Mm. I know what ninety-nine is. I do too. <laughs> you gain two uses of action surge when you are not restored upon, which are not restored upon rest. So you just got two extra action surges, dude, that you can use I mean, any one time you want. I'm gonna use them both. I mean, I would hope so. I like okay. the idea of like he gets yo yoed and then he just starts brutally yo yoing Malik around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Malik is getting wailed on this unending like Street Fighter combo. <laughs> uh, first attack is an 18. Which misses. Really misses. Yes. Uh, 20 on the dot. Okay. Uh, 27. Mm-hmm. A 20 again. Mm-hmm. A 15. Misses. And, okay, this one is usually my good one. And that one. Oh. <laughs> well, on the bright side, you get a wild magic switch. After another yeah, one. So three attacks hit. So go ahead and roll your your three damage, and then give me your another d100. 16, 16, 16. 
41 damage. 41 more points of damage, wow. And then, mm. So that was like over 100 points of damage. Yep. Pretty decent. Uh, the nat 1 wild magic surge is a 15 and a 79. 79 again. <laughs> Okay, so, um, for the next 10 minutes, you cannot willingly move within 5 feet of friendly creatures, as if repelled by magnetism. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens. It's either that or your so fingernails just... become polished, and that's... They uh, already are, baby! Yeah, they, are, they always are. <laughs> I get that one very frequently. <laughs> I believe it. Um, yeah, so, Moloch, like, pulls me back in and I just whip around him and just unload yeah you absolutely do and at slashing him repeatedly over and over again he is looking extremely hurt these cuts from that radiant uh, sword of yours is just burning into his flesh which does not seem to be able to regenerate um, because of that radiant uh, yeah he's not looking great at all now's the time finish him off I keep using math, but he keeps solving the problems. At the end of your turn, he's going to go ahead Actually, and use... bonus action, I'm going to second one. Oh, go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have bonus actions. Yeah, forgot about that, didn't you? Okay, so I heal 23. Okay, you're gaining a little bit of that vitality back, um, breathing in deep and preparing yourself as Malik uses that legendary action to just unload on you. With that many tailed whip. That's an 18 to hit. That misses. Nice. So, uh, he, like, he, he's trying hard. He weakly pulls up that whip, tries to swing at you. You nimbly jump back out of the way, dodging. Next up, we have a spine devil who's still in that gravity field, spinning around. He did manage to right himself. I think that was one of them that did. But, um,. Definitely not doing too well. He is going to go ahead and make that con saving throw again. Whoo! That's another nat one. These things are ineffectual as fuck. I knew <laughs> I should have given him something better. Um, but that's okay, because this thing is just spinning around. It begins vomiting once again. Um, the pinball effect of hitting the other spine devil and bouncing off of it is just sp sent him into a free spin, and vomit is spraying everywhere. <sighs> Evian, you're up next. I'm not a blinded over here. Do I still have a guy on top of me? Um, yeah, he's uh, about 10 feet away from you right now. And you are lying prone on your back um, on the side of the tunnel. Okay, so I'm going to stand on up, brush myself off a little, and pull up my crossbow from the side and shoot at him. Go for it. Make your shot. 25 to hit. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. That is 13 damage. Yeah. 13 points of damage It would be really the funny if Aragon devil. did... All, oh, it's the Chain Devil. I thought it'd be funny if like, Aragon did 13 attacks and then a single arrow finishes off Moloch. <laughs> well, did you say you're attacking the Chain Devil? Or did you say you're attacking uh, Moloch? Uh, no, uh, Chain Devil, yeah, the that, one who was on top of that's me. That's what I thought. That's yeah, what I thought. I, I wasn't paying attention for a second. That's on me. Okay, your arrow goes flying into his chest, strikes there, he grabs it, he kind of groans a little bit. Not a lot of damage, but a little bit. Uh, and I move to the side a little bit. Okay, now, so you are within 10 feet of him, that is within range, so that does trigger his reaction. So he's going to be okay. making a chain attack. Um, that should not have been a disadvantage, that it was a 20 to hit. Oh, I mean, no, it yeah, wasn't that hits. I'm sorry, it was a disadvantage because he's frightened. So oh, it's yeah, a 19. It was. So it's a 19 to hit. It still hits. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Um, 11 points of slashing damage. The target is grappled. Um, yeah, so you are grappled. Cool, cool. Wrapped up by this, he, as you're running away, uh, he just flings this chain out. It wraps around you. The spikes on the sides pierce into your flesh and kind of, it, it's like, like a, a saw motion, you, you, you know, like a chainsaw a little bit. And uh, you are unable to move away from him. I'm gonna holler out to my 
my hourly friend and uh, has some bardic inspiration. <laughs> the music of our people. <laughs> Baya looks Absolutely. at you, raises an eyebrow, is like, you know, in some cultures, I would be considered insensitive. <laughs> But I appreciate Sorry. it. Use your anger! <laughs> okay. Well, at the end of Evian's turn, um, Malak's going to go ahead and use his last um, legendary action. Barry, how are you looking right now? Um, honestly, all things considered, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, good to know. Um, so, Malik, uh, seeing this, that you're, you're not looking too terribly hurt, he's looking extremely hurt, and uh, he, he's getting a little frustrated at this point. He's like, I will not allow you, this, you to defeat me. I will succeed. I will change my fate. And he is going to go ahead and... He's just going to go ahead and wail on you again. That's a 19. That just hits. 13 points of slashing, 12 points of lightning. We do the yo-yo effect one more time as he flings you into that gravity well again. Make me a con saving throw. Con? Yep. Oh, no, don't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, um... 14... <laughs> 14, that is going to be a failure. Also, give me that strength saving throw to see whether or not um, Malik is able to pull you back. Forgot to have 27. Yeah, 27. Okay, that actually succeeds. He's not able to grab you, but with the 14 con save, um, you just get pushed out into the center of that space beginning to spin and twist and rotate and you get caught into the gravity well you're pulled down into the center of this area so you're literally 25 feet um hovering there um spinning and you can't help but vomit so can't he voluntarily uh. fail the saving throw to get pulled back well i think in this instance because it's malik uh, he, he's He's hurt pretty damn okay. badly. Um, he, he's like, he was tr literally trying to get him in there. Right, so it was so more of a... Like Malik didn't want to pull him out. Okay. Yeah, Mo Malik didn't want to pull him in. It happens anyway. It's possible that the chains just wrap around him. But he was wiggling at the time, so that's why um, he was able to get free of it. I follow. Reese, top of the turn order. You're up. Um, I am going to try to move a little bit closer to try and keep all of my friends within my radius. Okay, and then I'm gonna um, Guiding Bolt Moloch. I hope. And I'm gonna use my last lucky point because that was a nat one. 24. 24 does oh, it. Oh, thank god. <laughs> Anybody else sweating? I'm sweating. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's warm in my room. Um, Guiding Ball, okay, and then if I up casting it at level 3, it's going to be 6d6, okay, 31 plus 4 is 35 points of radiant damage. 35 points of radiant damage. From from the ceiling, you gather up all your energy into that uh, guiding bolt, unleashing it towards Malik, almost like a, you, you know, like a, a spirit ball a little bit. It goes flying towards him, striking him in the chest. Malik cries out in pain as his guiding bolt burns into his flesh, and he begins to glow f faintly. He is looking extremely hurt by this point. I can't bonus action throw a dagger, can I? I have to actually no. melee attack to be able to use my da off dagger and off hand. Correct. Hit. Dang it. Um. I'm sure Bigby's giant foot's got this. <laughs> I finish him with a dick cake. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll 13 just 13 sword attacks. No, no, no. Just the kick and the dick with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'll just take uh, I'll use my bonus action to dodge. That's it for Reese's turn. Malik's out of legendary actions. Via, <laughs> what would you like to do? 
Now, I've been thinking about this and that it would be funny for him to just get kicked in the dick and die. <laughs> but, <laughs> it would be. Please do it. But I also kind of... I, I kind of want to save the, the foot to go break the machine. Because um, we don't know what's good. Um... But I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll 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 kick the we'll kick him with the with the foot. Kick we'll kick him with the, the foot. Dick. <laughs> kick the man the dick. It has advantage because of guiding bolts. Oh, true, it does. Okay. Please. All right. Crit. Yeah. Please so crit. it'll another crit with the foot. Hold on. What's its speed? Uh. That's a good question, actually. Oh wait, I can bonus action move it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I I can move up to sixty feet. It can it can get there. Okay, yeah, Oop. definitely. <laughs> so with your bonus action, you're sending the Bigby's foot flying over to Malik. What you got? We got, um, not a crit, sadly, uh, but it does probably still hit. That's going to be 21. I think you guys said 20 hits, yeah, so 21 should uh, hit. Yeah, 21 is going to hit. Roll that damage. You already got the prize for most damage dealt in one round, Marty. You're good. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I wanted to do more. <laughs> 29 force damage from the foot. That was one hell of a kick to the crotch. Now it's about so last. Vaya. Vaya. Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> paint us a word picture real quick. <laughs> Tell me how this looks. I'm punching the air right now. Hold good. on. I have, I have to ask someone something. Hey, love. What did Arlo tell Moloch when he, he was going to eat his dick? Is that what he said? You know, at some point, once this is all over and I have my stuff back, I am going to bite off this dude's penis. But he probably thinks I can't do that, so he'll probably, like, he'll agree to whatever anyway. I am going to do it. He looks at him. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bite off that dick. So, uh, via controlling this Bigsby's giant foot, sees through time, sees this moment where this cowboy dragonborn is telling Moloch that he's gonna bite his dick off and this <laughs> foot forms a mouth as it goes and kicks him in the crotch and bites. <laughs> Chomps down through this uh. dick and Moloch screams this high-pitched <laughs> scream of pain. Ah! Her gun just bursts out laughing. <laughs> just spinning around in the middle of this gravity thing. <laughs> <laughs> Vomit and laughter flying everywhere. You watch as Malik begins to burn away from the stump of his poor phallus. Upward, burning <laughs> through his body slowly. His last words are... Uh, Cause he just got kicked in the dick. <laughs> He's like yeah. Mullen. The winds die down around you. You still have those spine devils in the air, um, being controlled by that that spell of yours. There is still a chain devil, but with Malik gone, the 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 danger here is pretty much negligible. I imagine the chain devil would see his master defeated once again and turn his tail and run away. Yeah, yeah guys, you're, Asmodeus you're... is hiring guys. Don't, you don't need to fight us. Yeah. Um, they, they wouldn't at this point. Malak is defeated. Do you release them from the, the gravity? Vaya will drop concentration on the gravity field. Uh, the Big B's hand kind of lasts a little bit longer, but as the, the gravity is removed, you, you see the, the spine devils kind of fly down a little bit, and they're like, look, he was just paying us. This was a job. We're, we're, we're gonna go. Get money. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we're, we're gonna keep this. And I walk into the machine and grab that root, and I'm like, I hand it to Double Tail. I'm like, I feel like you'll be able to make good use of this in the future. What, what, the, what was it? The dream root that's in the machine. Yeah. There's a, a, at the edge of that machine, you can see that there's this tree root just kind of hovering there. It's about, you know, like softball with a round, um, kind of tapered at one end and just kind of broken at the other. It's just hovering there in this arcane space, but um, it, it, it wouldn't take you a, a lot of time to figure out how to power down the, this machine. It'd be a little bit of trial and error. I'm but a robot, the, we got this. The, yeah, I, I really think you'd be able to handle it just yeah. fine. I so you power it down. Machine. What's that? I R2-D2, like, insert my hand in the machine to turn it off. 
<laughs> just kick it a couple times with the foot. <laughs> you just talk to it and ask it to go to yeah. sleep. <laughs> hey, you, just, you guys just hear an elaborate series of boops and beeps between me and the machine. <laughs> <laughs> As your hand um, grasps that that branch, uh, Baragon, you can all hear the voice of the goddess whispering to you. Well done, my brave champions. You have stopped Moloch and his horrible machinations, and you have made sure that fate and destiny are safe once again. A portal opens up, and this time you can see through the portal to the other side um, the garden that the goddess had created for you. She's standing there um, on the other side, smiling, grateful, beckoning you to return. You have a way forward, a way back to your own times, your own planes of existence, but you have succeeded. You have defeated Malik and stopped him from changing his fate. And the goddess is elated. So well done, everybody. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Jake, what are all those strange people doing to the side of the ship? Well, Alexa, we need to let people know about our sponsor, Dragon Master Games. So I had their logo painted on the side of the ship. Do you think a local game store will want people to know they're in league with pirates? Maybe not. There is nothing stopping you from spreading word about all the great products and services Dragon Master Games offers at every port we visit, or how you can order things from their online storefront. But please, do not paint their logo on me. Uh, fair point. Nothing a little press digitation can't fix. Anyway, time to embark. Avast me, hardies! It's time we depart from this cursed port. Isn't this your hometown? Yes, and I've surely outstayed me welcome. Hostile lifeforms detected. You see several muscular goons approaching the ship as you raise anchor. Uh, who are those guys? No one to be concerned about. I feel like that means we should explicitly be concerned. Not at all. Those are our wonderful patrons coming to collect their annual swag bags and join us in the community game day. Ahoy, mateys! Come aboard for some of the finest swag in the Astral Sea. Oh, okay then. Uh, where did we get patrons exactly? They subscribe to Bard Rock Network on Patreon or Ko-fi. Supporters gain access to all those rewards and more. Links can be found in the show notes. Looks like we'll be staying another 10 day after all. Miss Polly, refreshments for our guests. Sure, I have nothing better to do than make snacks for everyone. Oh, you're right. I'm so sorry, Miss Polly. I don't want to keep you from your duties. Uh, what's your job title again? Ships. Cook. <laughs> ah, so then you'll be making refreshments for our guests then. Snarky attitude detected. You're damn right. Thank you for all for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. Oh, <laughs>